I'll show that one more, because I'm remaking rigs that I want to use for next week anyway. That's an, an up in the water rig. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly go through some rigs for the main loft just to show you the differences. These are the kind of things that I use and that Big Davy and um, Colin have talked about. Here is a proper gear yep, cap and skimmers rig, which is 0.14 line to a gram and a half float with quite a thick tip. You can see it there. You, you'll notice that most of us adapt our bristles for pushing the main lock here for, to be long enough to just get away from the skim, but also to give you like a reading of the bites. So that will take, uh, you can lay foot line in the bottom, you can fish quite a big bait, it can be quite skimmy with the wind and the, the sun will be pretty bad. They'll still see that, yeah? But it'll hold okay. So that's the kind of rig I'd use with a, an 18 hook, uh, 0.12 hook length, yeah? Mainly for catching carp. But sometimes that rig will put off some of the smaller fish, the smaller skimmers and things, you won't have that. This is the next rig I'm going to use, which I'm going to make up, which is um, 1.25, which is a slightly finer version of that. Yeah. And I'm, I'll set that up on 0.12 line, 0.12 line, which is sort of that three pound dime line. Um, and I generally put a sort of 20, a decent 20 maggot hook with a 0.1 hook line, something that'll catch everything. Yeah, it's not a fine, fine roach rig, but if you could cap, you'll be okay. So that's that rig here. These other ones here are more um, roach down in the water. So that's a, a roach rig, it's quite a fine tip. That's on point 0.1 line to a weight hook length of 20 that will fish near the bottom for catching only roach. If you could carp in that, you'll be in a bit of trouble, but you don't need to, you don't need to do that. This one's a light, slightly lighter, but it's just fish off, slightly off the bottom. And these are the two up in the water rigs I'll come to later. But for just now, I want to remake this rig here. Okay, so I've got the numbers up there. This is going on point. One two line. So you cut the line before putting two numbers. The point is to make the line damp when you're putting new things together when you're putting short on and stuff like that. That's all. Right, so this one you'll see. I have put four rubbers on. You know, it's the, there's a longer one at the end that overlaps the end. There's one under the float and just two little ones down the stem just to make sure that it's not going to bend when you try and move it around. It's very important with wire stem floats because they, they are a bit fragile and prone to break. This one here I'm going to set up with an olivet. So I've got a, an olivet here. This is one where the, the line goes through the rubbers rather than through the hole. Um, I find them fine. And it allows you, it's a bit easier for setting up. Okay, so the, 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 what's a bit funny, the important thing about using these um, peg olivets is to use rubber that's long enough to more than overlap the peg. Yeah, especially the, the um, top one. As you see, it overlaps the peg, and also you can push it down onto the body. Yeah, so you've got a real a real solid grip, you can see that there. The, um, if you only use short rubbers, sometimes it's more likely to ping off. I've never had these ping off before. Yeah. I know some people worry about it. I don't worry about it. So that's all of it. That's a gram all of it. It's a 1.25 gram float. I'm hoping it'll, it'll shut up the way it should do. Put some of these on. Is that the few number eights? because I expected to take a few days. Let's try that and see. See how it goes. Just a okay, that's that's Right, actually, I'm going to take one of those eights off. And I would rather have a string of tens yeah, to be usable. Yeah, to, you can move them around the spot. So that's too many eights. The tens now.
the more positive way that I would say, I wouldn't go lighter than, than tens. So I'll make sure they get a positive way to fish. about right, it's taking it to plenty, plenty of bristle left to count for the weight of the line. So I'll just go with that. Again, it's important to you'll, you'll, you'll fine tune that when you get to your, your, your peg or before, well before the axis, you've got to take the legs in the water and really fine tune them. Especially when you're fishing at the, this could be fishing in 15, 16, 17 foot water. You really don't know what weight of line, how that's going to affect the float. It does. So I might have to take one of them off. Or change one of the eights for another ten. At least the legs generally there. Again, the important thing, test the shots as you move up the line, just make sure they move really smoothly, but, but also that they grip properly. Sometimes you put them on and they're too, too soft and they'll slide too easily. Yeah. You grip them on again. And that's my three number 10 droppers. That should be fine. And move it nicely. Right, discard that bit line. That's the important look, just try and get it as small as possible, just a little bit of water in that size of it. Now, when you make, for example, a home, how much line to put on it, you've got to make sure you've got enough line on it to cater for all the situations you're going to get here. For the main loch, you're going to be fishing 16, 17, 18 foot. So you generally want to have it uh, more line than you need. You can always shorten it when you go. So I, don't, I think I've measured these before. We've got 24 turns on this 26 centimetre now. Right. So look. Just 